this week on A Britain Poland. I, for the third time, have come to Hata Sociologia, um, which is a very nice hut uh, within the Bierstadi Mountains. Eagle-eyed viewers or faithful viewers of mine will notice I've done two other videos from this location. The first one, this time last year, where there was a lot of snow and I managed to spectacularly get lost in the mountains for about four hours. Uh, the second time was in the summer when everything was just beautiful. This time it's raining and there's been a lot of mud everywhere. So it's been quite challenging to walk uh, up and down, but it's been great. So join me on my journey and I will tell you about this trip and also I have a nice surprise in that I went to a nearby town called Lutowiska and found some gems there. So stay tuned. Dzień dobry and welcome to A Brit in Poland. This channel is going to bring you everything you need to know about Poland. I am exploring the country, bringing you the history, trying to tell you about the culture and show you what it is really like to live here. So feel free to check out my other media, Instagram, Facebook, and I will share links to those in the comments. I also have a website, www.britinpoland.com, where I collate my videos for easy to view manner. Also, you are welcome to contribute to my efforts through Patronite or Patreon, and all descriptions are available below the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and please come back for more by subscribing, liking, or commenting. Thank you very much. Dalsa Vichenia. Once again, a big thank you to the people that support my channel. It means a lot, and you help me to grow and encourage me to explore. So uh, this is the route we took from Warsaw on the coach. You can see here the people gathering. We're getting it together at about 6 p.m. So we have quite a long journey. I think it's about eight hours or so. So what do we do on the coach? Well, we talk, we drink, we snack, and maybe there's a little bit of singing and things. But for sure, you know, it's a nice warm up to the party ahead of the adventures to come. And yeah, this is not an error. This is how dark it is. Um, as you can see, my action camera is not great. And finally, this is the top. It was quite misty and uh, wet and muddy. So on the first day, well, on the Friday, we were playing a few board games. And it's, yeah, I got to play this new potion making game, which was quite fun, uh, that my friend Chris brought along. Here is a view of the kitchen, which uh, I don't think I showed on previous videos. So, yeah, I have my special camera here, which is not as good as my phone, but I'm allowed to use it in the hut. And you see some of the board games and some of the decor that we have inside. And of course, we eat. We eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, or schniadania, obiad, and... Hmm. Why do I keep forgetting the third one? Never mind. Uh, Kalasia, maybe? Um, yeah, so we have a working stove in the kitchen. So here you can see, I think it's kind of like a, a curry uh, that we're cooking up. We have different shifts. Uh, so people will be assigned to the various meals. And as you can see, we have quite a few people in the group. So it's quite an even distribution. But yeah, on those rainy days, you tend to find more people indoors just chatting and chilling. And in the evening on the Friday, more games. Yeah, this is Saboteur, and we played like uh, just a minute or something like that. It was, it's always quite fun to just like... As I come here more often, I get to understand the kind of local geography a bit better. So there are a lot of towns built around Otrid, this kind of mountain that we're on now. So Hatta Sociologia is kind of a central point. So this trip I had the, thanks to uh, my friend Aga, uh, we were able to explore Lutowiska. So I'll be showing you some wonderful, wonderful scenes from there shortly. 
and no time like the present. So, to get to Lutavisca, well, there is a trail, apparently, uh, though I'm told it's not well marked, though a few people uh, did it on the, the Friday, bless them, given the weather. We went down the, the main trail, uh, back to the car park, so that we could get our pierogi. And as you can see from people's boots, the situation with the mud. And Aga took me and Richard II um, to the town of Lutavisca. So immediately, you may gather it's not the biggest of places. I think the population is about 700. And this is like the, the main square where we parked up. And our first quest was to try and find a bar. Because uh, we fancied a beer and to grab something to eat. So we're walking through. We have found a couple of locals uh, that gave us directions. We found this rather kind of old abandoned house that looked really cool. I'd love to know a little bit more about it because it was rather distinctive in style. This is, of course, the government building. The government buildings always tend to look the fanciest in Poland, especially in these small places. And here we found uh, the local church, which was a beautiful building. I, th I think it, it dates from like around 1920, 1930. And of course, nice big stone behind, uh, which uh, there are all these monuments, a little sanctuary. And uh, the little cemetery in the back, and of course Polish graves always look immaculate. There was this tiny model village, and we found out that actually this is used for bees. Uh, so they're all mini beehives, and we found these like Celtic horoscopes. Apparently I'm related to a juniper tree. The information office bizarrely was not open at weekends, but luckily Google was able to help us. And, yeah, we found this rather interesting car on top of a kind of trailer. Um, not quite sure the history there. And eventually we uh, decide to take a little bit of a 20-minute hike to get to this rather cool-looking area. So you can see the beautiful views. Lutavisca is actually like, dates back to the 10th century, apparently, but recorded history seems to start more around the kind of 16th century. It kind of it was owned by Poland, by Austria, uh, by the Soviets, by the Nazis, then the Soviets again, and finally Poland got it back, I think, uh, in the kind of 1950s. This is a really cool restaurant that we found in uh, like the style of a, an old fort. If you want to see uh, more images of this, I suggest you check out my Instagram because I got a few different angles there. Britain, Poland or Brit underscore in underscore Poland, if you're wondering. So after stopping there for a nice cold beer and a bit of soup, we headed back. And we saw this monument, and this monument's slightly unique in that it actually mentions gypsies who were killed. And then we saw a couple of these information boards with a few bits of information on local sites and offering a few kind of, let's say, cultural trails. Uh, this is like a, a horse school. Yeah, it seems like horses are very highly connected to Lutavisca. Uh, originally the area was kind of used for grazing cattle and farming and we took a bit of a wander to this rather immense uh, Jewish cemetery which has actually survived from I think about the 1830s I was a bit surprised by the scale and even though it seems in very you know high disrepair it managed to survive World War II um, in a pretty reasonable state but you can see it extends quite a lot uh, but uh, quite a lot of the the markings on the graves were well preserved which um, and Jewish graves are always the most interesting because of all the, the sort of sacred markings you find so eventually we had to, to, to leave because well we needed to uh, get back to eat the pierogi that we'd been busy collecting. 
So this is this rather cool thing, which I guess in the summer works as like a fountain next to the steps, just by the market square. And then we found this really cool like church up on the hill um, by Smolnik, which is uh, like a neighboring town to Lutovska. And this was built in 1791, and it's an Orthodox church of St. Michael the Archangel. And it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Apparently the, like the furnishings inside are a bit more modern, and it's like one of about four surviving churches of its type in the area, and this being the most well-preserved. So this was like a really cool random bonus find uh, as we were driving back. And like, yeah, I don't see demons too much in carving, so that was cool. So this was like a, yeah, really nice bonus as we were heading off. Because it really, like, it stands out rather dramatically on like the, the top of the hill. And yeah, we had to get back up the mountain. It's not like the furthest um, like distance. It's it only takes maybe like an hour and a half or so uh, to get back up to the top. And if you're in really good condition, like this guy who just overtook me, uh, then you're probably looking at an hour to actually traverse it. But because of the mud and the fact that like I don't know, I'm just not used to mountain walking. Um, it was a bit of a challenge for me, you know, like there were some parts that were a bit vertical. In the evening, we were celebrating, it's the 30th anniversary of people coming to this mountain. So you can see everyone is like in high spirits, uh, the men are in shirts, the ladies are in dresses, and somebody brought, I think, yeah, somebody brought Pavels, I think brought some sparklers, which was a rather nice touch. So you can see everyone is in really good spirits and really like making the most of the celebration. We had a, a lady playing music, people were dancing. And, you know, it's probably the most vibrant I've seen the, uh, you know, the hut um, in like the, the, the few times I've been along. And I may have been a bit cheeky here and used my phone to record this, but I saw other people using their phone. So March, and if you're watching, I wasn't the only one who broke the rule. I only used it for recording. Don't kill me. But you can see with this community here, like they're generally a group of kind, happy, decent people. And they're all just looking for the same thing, which is to escape from everyday life and really enjoy the scenery that the mountains have, as well as the sort of seclusion away from civilization. This is Aga, bless her, if it wasn't for her, I would have been stranded on quite a few trips and I wouldn't have seen as much of Poland as I have done. But you can see it's quite a musical group. Like we have a couple of people like Schwager who play the guitar. Quite a few people will... One of the reasons I, I love coming here, well, actually, yeah, there are a lot. Firstly, it's just good to get away from civilization. I generally put the phone in airplane mode, completely disconnect from looking at Facebook, Instagram, and all of those things, you know, and they have a, a no phone rule in the cabin, so you shouldn't be using your mobile phone in there, which has made filming a bit of a challenge, but I had this thing, we'll see how good the footage comes out in the dark. Um, secondly, like, you always have like really amazing people here. Uh, each time I come here, I meet new people and further cement friendships with people I already know. Uh, I, you know, I can feel a little bit socially awkward in crowds of people, but when I know them, it's not a problem. And 
every time I come back here, I feel that little bit more welcome and I feel more comfortable with people. You know, like there are people that I would barely chat to on another trip and then suddenly we're chatting for ages. You know, I really love that. There's this massive sense of community, you know, that's a part of this project. And I look forward to coming back in the summer. Yeah, it's always funny when you get talking to people because you never know what discussions are going to come up. And it made me reflect back to my, my time at university. And there I was doing, let's say, amateur acting. And we had a really good community there. Sadly, no one I really still keep proper contact with. Everyone went their own separate ways after university, basically. And a few people would message occasionally. Maybe we'll exchange something on Facebook, but that's about it. When I was thinking back to those times and how in Warsaw, I guess, I'm trying to accomplish the same thing and build my own community here, which is going rather well. I've met a lot of amazing people living in Poland and I want to continue to do so. And yeah, this video feels a little bit random, but when you're hungover, tired, but also insanely relaxed, it's hard to focus and really think about anything deep and meaningful. It's just good to be. And if it wasn't for the rain, I would be doing a lot more. So thank you very much for watching. You know, it's been a, an absolute pleasure to show you Polish nature once again, to teach you a little bit about Polish culture. So I hope you enjoyed the video and please like, please subscribe and come back. So, Doza Pechenia, Papa.